Hi, I'm Tomek and I am Senior Backend Engineer at Merix Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how we take care of our code at Merix Studio and make sure it's always the highest quality. I will acquaint you with our development standards and the tools we use. We will also jump into our code and I will walk you through it. So let's start with the best practices. We try to accommodate the commonly used best practices. The first of them is DRY. DRY is an acronym that stands for Don't Repeat Yourself. Anytime there is a duplication of code or you are copying and pasting anything inside your code base, you should think twice before doing so because you probably can reuse the same code and make your code look cleaner, be easier to maintain and less error prone. Another good practice is KISS. KISS is another acronym that stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. A simpler solution is better than a complex one because simple solutions are easier to maintain. This includes increased readability, understandability and changeability. Furthermore, writing simple code is less error prone. Another rule is more is more complex. Having more lines of codes, methods, classes, packages, executables, libraries, etc. always means also to have more complexity. There is also another rule, uh, which is an acronym and stands for you ain't gonna need it. In the context of optimization, you are unlikely to know upfront whether an optimization will be of any real benefit. Just write the code in the simplest way. If eventually after profiling you discover a bottleneck, optimize that. SOLID is another acronym which stands for multiple sets of rules. We are using it with emphasis on single responsibility principle as it is the fundament of clean and readable code. We always try to keep in mind the bigger picture. We try not to focus only on the current task and always try to think ahead and predict what might be needed in the future. On the top of the best practices, we stick to our internal guidelines, which include following the PEP20. PEP stands for Python Enhancement Proposals. PEP20 is the Zen of Python and it gives a general guidance of writing good code. Sticking to PEP8, which is style guide for Python code, which focuses on specific rules of code formatting like indentation, blank lines, imports, etc. We keep our code well documented with PEP257. When our code is not self-explanatory, we use docstrings to describe what is the purpose of the certain chunk of code. We use type hinting whenever we can. It enables us to detect a lot of mistakes before even running the code. We write unit tests. This helps us to avoid situations in which we say, but that worked just an hour ago. We use Git for versioning our code. There is also a set of rules that we apply to make sure that our work is effective and clean. One of the rules is to use explanatory commit messages. For example, another fix is bad. It says nothing about the code that was pushed to the repository. A good example would be products listing API endpoint. It briefly describes the contents of this commit. Another rule would be consistent commits. We try to avoid pushing unfinished features, to-do comments or fragments of codes that are for debugging purposes only. We use the Gitflow branching model, which helps us to maintain and deliver consistently new features to our QA department and also to our clients. I will now briefly walk you through the environments that we use on our daily basis. For the local development, we use Docker and Docker Compose. It helps us to set up the project on any machine in no time and decreases the effort to introduce, for example, a new code developer to the team. Kubernetes with Helm charts is used for the develop environment. The deployment process is semi-automatic which makes the cooperation between the engineering and QA department seamless. For staging and production environment, we use Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, or whatever you wish for. Of course, we can advise you what would be the best fit for your idea in terms of scalability, high availability, performance, and of course, pricing. The development cycle starts with developing new feature. If a developer considers the feature to be finished, then at least one different engineer needs to approve the code in order to be able to push the code to the repository. That's our internal rule. Code review is also a good opportunity to share knowledge between the members of the team and increase each other's skills. Each time a new chunk of code is being pushed to the repository, 
it triggers a set of automated tasks that are performed. Automatic tests are being run, linting, which is running a program that analyzes the code in terms of following the best practices I mentioned earlier. Deployment, if the previous stages pass successfully, then the application is being built and deployed to the corresponding environment. Okay, so now it's time to dive into the code. Let's start with the view. View handles requests and returns response or throws an exception. In this case, the doc string explains the purpose of this view. What is worth noting is clean code structure. Also, a generic exception is being handled and a custom exception is being thrown instead. Also, this view uses a generic API view, which is a shortcut for building a new view. It uh, enables you to use the built-in functionalities into a Django framework and makes the code looks cleaner and more readable. Also, some configurable parameters are being used in this code so that we are not hard coding any values into the code. You might notice what is missing in this particular view. What is, it is type hinting. Mm, this is... Uh, done on purpose because of backwards compatibility with older Python versions. Another part of code that we'll discuss is a service. In this case, a service is a user's token generator example. What is worth noticing is a self-explanatory name of the class. Also, docstring explains the details and the purpose of this service. Also, meaningful method names is something that is worth noting. Uh, an implementation of an abstraction, which enables us to interchange this particular service with another one. Also, we try to keep our code clean and as readable as possible. Also, another chunk of code would be another service. I think this one is quite different from the previous one and it's also worth discussing. This is a notification handle example. And also, this is a, an abstract class which uses a generic type. This class can be implemented in multiple ways and also can define its own return type. Also, what is worth mentioning is a bulk create for database in insertion. Instead of creating new objects in for loop and inserting them by one by one. Another code part would be a model. Model represents the data model or a business model. In this case, it's a method of authentication and it consists of multiple fields. All of them are quite self-explanatory. The code is very readable. The doc string explains the details of the purpose of this, of this model. Another example can be a serializer. It validates input data and also serializes or deserializes the data models. What is worth mentioning here is again explanatory name. Doc string explains the details and also readable structure, data type validation and business logic validation. This is an example of env file, which enables us to configure the environment in the way that we need it. It enables us to have the same code base reusable across all environments. It consists of the configuration for all external services and all the parameters that needs to be passed to the application regarding the environment that the application will be run on. This way, there is no need to change the code base for deployment to each environment. Okay, so that's basically it. Of course, this process can vary in each project depending on the chosen tech stack. If you are looking for experienced developers who deliver high quality code, contact us and let's talk about your project. Mm -hmm.